somebody say to me the other day, and I use that phrase, that the EPA regulations are like a fatwa in the cult of climate change, which is, you know, associated with Islam and, and a fatwa, as you know, is a declaration by an imam or a, a religious leader, which is an edict, it's a mandate, it's an order to do something specific. And I had somebody say to me the other day, you're just trying to be controversial. Well, I disagree. I'm actually not trying to be controversial. I'm just pointing out to you the absurdity. You wouldn't listen to a fatwa given by a, a Muslim imam to, uh, to you know, not allow your wife to drive. Because you'd say to yourself, well, wait a minute. First of all, I don't believe in that. Secondly, I, I want my wife to be able to drive. One, because she's an intelligent, articulate human being with rights and, and, and privileges of her own just based on the fact that she's alive. Secondly, it's, it's to our benefit that she can drive because our kids need to be able to go to school and they need to be able to go to a sports game after, uh, after work and, they need to, and she needs to be able to get to a job that she works and that she enjoys. All makes logical sense, right? But you're being told, well, because it's against someone's interpretation of some allegedly sacred book, your wife shouldn't drive. And you would dismiss that out of hand and say, that's a mandate from a cult. So is the EPA regs. Something that would, first and foremost, limit our ability to function as a society, something which we rely upon, so intrinsically tied, so integral to our lives as energy, and you're being told, no more. For what purpose? First and foremost, the industry that we're going to lose because people can't afford to run an industry when the, gas, when the electric and the gas prices are so high Those people who are going to be put out of business and the subsequent jobs that will be lost will move where? They will move to a country that is not abiding by the climate change fatwa. In fact, interestingly enough, many of the Muslim countries don't give a doggone hoot about climate and the climate change crazies. They've already got their own religion that they believe in. You see, here's the point. The EPA regulations that are being injected into the American industry and the American and, and, and with it with willful intent to destruct, <clears throat> they're only going to have a two percent impact on carbon emissions. Two percent. but it will have a 40%, a 100%, a 200% increase in the bills of people who heat and cool their homes, of businesses who are trying to use electricity to run a factory or a plant or a mill. And the world's large carbon emitters, and we are one of them, there's no denying it, but there's China and there's India and there's Russia, and they're not following any of this. And they're just too happy to watch us shoot ourselves in the foot 15 minutes before the race begins. So what, we can even the playing field? I mean, what Olympian runner who is the hands-down, odds-on favorite to win would shoot himself in the foot before the race? just to balance the competition. That's essentially what we're being told to do. We, did, we just did the same thing with medical and Obamacare. Why would we we'd be willing to do the same thing with energy?
The whole concept of climate change is based on a fallacy and a group of lies. I know there's those people out there that will say, that's not true. The United Nations has done studies. Yes, the United Nations has done studies. In fact, I just did a program not so long ago that showed you that the summary of the IC... Uh, uh, um, I can't think of the acronym anymore. Uh, ICC or ICG, I've forgotten which it is. That their study on climate change, the International Climate Group, I think it's ICG, or C for commission, their study and the summary that was written was so roundly trounced by the actual authors of the full study, they wouldn't sign off on it. They said it was rewritten to meet political agendas, not to expose the truth, not to accurately summarize what was in the full-blown study. The United Nations is interested in utilizing climate change as an excuse to run a carbon emissions trading scheme. What this is, ladies and gentlemen, is a gigantic vacuum being held over nations, starting with the United States, because we happen to be the wealthiest, to suck the resources and the revenue away from you. The same resources and revenue that they're afraid you're going to use to rise up against them. Hello? You think that's not true? Why are they trying so hard to bar you and limit you from owning firearms or the ammunition to make those firearms worthwhile? They dry up the marketplace willingly. Why? Because they're nervous. They don't like it when you have the ability to fight back. The first thing a bully does is disarm its victim. And they want to limit your ability to have these resources, to fight back against them politically, economically, financially, electorally. They don't want you to have the resources to be able to take out an ad. They don't want you to have the resources to be able to donate to a radio program like this, which runs at a red deficit of every month of $1,000. They want you broke, scared, cowering, and compliant. And they don't care what they got to do to accomplish that. And they don't care who they got to buy off and corrupt to accomplish that. I point you again to the polar bear thing. The numbers were made up to satisfy public demand. That's the statement from the scientists themselves. The argument is in the daily, the, the article's in the Daily Caller. It says, this may come as a shocker to some, but scientists are not always right, especially when under intense public pressure for answers. Researchers with the polar bear specialist group recently admitted to experienced zoologist and polar bear specialist Susan Crockford that the estimate given for the total number of polar bears in the Arctic was, quote, simply a qualified guess given to satisfy public demand. Yet the climate change people went out and ran fat what fat was based upon it as if it was empirical truth, truth d delivered by the finger of God and written onto the wall this woman Crockford she's been critical all along about the official polar bear numbers and the estimates of their population because they failed to include five large subpopulations of polar bears oh there we go with the what's the phrase lies, statistics, and damn lies and statistics or something. Due to the uncertainty of the population of these areas, the polar bear specialist group didn't include them in the official estimate. But the polar bear group did include other subpopulations of other bears in those estimates. So basically, they leave out a big chunk of the population and say, 
well, we're just going to discount this as if it doesn't exist. And then when they put out the number and the population numbers are shockingly low, everyone says, oh, my goodness. It's all scams. They said for years that the population, the bear population was between 20 and 25,000. But these estimates are likely much lower than how many real actual polar bears are actually living in the world. Based on the previous estimates given by this polar bear research group and other research reports, it appears that there are probably at least another six to 9,000 more bears. So hold on a minute. Let's just understand that. So you're saying that there's 20 to 25,000 bears, but the real number is anywhere between six and 9,000 more, which is anywhere between 20 and 45% more bears than you gave us the impression of. And then utilizing those false numbers, which are clearly falsified because you knew and you had empirical proof that the actual number of bears was higher, but what you really wanted to do was create an impression that wasn't accurate. And then the people in the UN and the climate change group and, the, and these, these mad-hatting uh, extremists run off with those numbers as if they were written by the finger of God itself. They planned on, well, first of all, uh, they, say, they admitted that it was guesses. but at least it gave a potential size. <laughs> We're not here to worry about potential sizes. First of all, the whole argument that, that you know, there can, be, there can be an empirically accurate count of polar bears is as absurd as trying to tell me that you can make an empirical population count of squirrels. It's inherently flawed because, one, they're all over the place, and two, they're all over the place in the biggest, vast, most vast wilderness uh, that exists. Places where human beings can't even go. They're estimates at best. But to underestimate those estimates in an attempt to write a commissioned piece of creative art and then have the EPA issue a fatwa based upon that that's criminal. And I'm sick and tired of criminal scientists issuing criminal work to criminal bureaucrats who then use that against you and against me. Did you know that nobody in the EPA takes an oath of office? Did you know that? You know why they don't? Because they're not defending the Constitution and the United States of America nor the people they're under from threats domestic and foreign. In fact, they are the domestic threat. This is a cult. And it's called the cult of government. They issue fatwas. They demand rigorous, rigorous following of their edicts. Unlike most religions, they actually back theirs up with guns, which reminds me of the folks at the Jim Jones compound who came to their senses as they were handed a, a Dixie cup full of Kool-Aid and said, I'm not sure that this is really the right thing for me to do. But security came up and said, oh, yes, you do. Now drink. And when people began to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to give that Dixie cup of Kool-Aid to my baby. They said, oh, yes, you are.
the cult of government has replaced religion for many people. I keep hearing people say to me, well, the total number of believers in the United States and across the continent of Europe and, and it, it, worldwide is down. I think they're just switching religion. They still want to believe in something. And it's easy to have faith in something you can see versus something you can't. The simple truth is that the world constantly has a need to fill the human void within us with something, something bigger than ourselves. And the simple truth is that those people who have lost their hope or their faith in religion are happily willing to switch from one, you know, it, it's, it's, like an, it's like an addict who comes off of, of, of one drug and then picks up another to replace it with. It's a substitution. Tell me the government's not a religious cult? Think about it. Think about it. Why is it that government swears up and down that they base their decisions on logic and yet don't. They always base them on emotion. I'm going to tell you why. Because emotion, emotion, is what allows a cult to flourish. If you can get someone emotionally involved, it will override their ability to think logically, rationally, clearly, and insightfully. And that's why they raise the issue of polar bears. That's why they tell us that California will be an inland sea and the Hague will be unlivable. And according to Barack Obama, with the advent of his time in office, the seas will begin to recede and stop rising. He actually said that. Now think about it. charismatic leader who comes forth, the man who's the first black man to run and become president. He's broken the challenges. He's broken new ground. He's a man of strength and integrity. He's a man who promised this and that and the next thing. But then his human fallacy and human frailness showed through. And we realize what he is, a weak puppet. with illusions and delusions of grandeur. Because he's no longer worried about what's the right thing to do for America. Now all he's worried about is, what's going to be my legacy? Who cares? By the time your legacy is written, you're going to be dead and gone. What difference does it make? I attribute that quote to Hillary Clinton. I mean, at that point, Barack, what difference does it make? You're never going to know what they think. This is all about control people, and it has nothing to do with anything else. I've been telling you that. I told you that about, the, the, about originally Obamacare. It is the same thing for these EPA regulations. Like a cult, and like every cult that has ever existed, the leaders have a need for iron rule. I, I posted an article up on our Facebook page this morning, and you can find it there, and I'll, I'll attach it to the link in this segment. Obamacare ushering in a national enrollment system. 
I've been telling you since the beginning of this treason that that's what this was all about, control, and it had nothing to do with health care. And the EPA is the same thing. It's all about control. It has nothing to do with the environment. They don't give a darn about the environment. And it's only going to fix it by 2%. It's, gonna, it's not even going to fix it. It's only going to cut the emissions by 2%. But it's going to impact our economic scenario and the lives of Americans where their energy bills is a major aspect of their, li- of their, of their monthly expenditure. Health care, or in this case, energy, or in this case, clean air, or in this case, clean water, is only the excuse. Why? Because it, like healthcare, it touches every single individual human being without fail. Healthcare is the only thing that, and energy usage, and the the industries that surround it, and the EPA, because it's clean water, air and water, and everybody has to breathe and, and drink. And it touches every person in their lifetime. It's the only way to get you from birth to death. It's why universal national health care, by the way, has always been as the, in the plank, uh, uh, the, the plank statements of every totalitarian playbook, every one, without fail, every single time. These are merely the, the, the steps that are taken by totalitarians, by authoritarians, by oligarchs, by people who mean to be your rulers, and they do mean to rule. You see, the concept of this, once it's introduced and injected into our society, it's like a cancer, and it immediately begins to thrive and breed, and it's metastasized faster than your wildest nightmares. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the United States of Tyranny. We're going to wrap this program for the day. I'd appreciate it if you would make sure that you visit two of our sponsors, at least two. One would be their websites at AmericanResumeService.com. AmericanResumeService.com. You can call them at 417 264 2486. That's 417 264 2486. You can also get them by email at info at AmericanResumeService.com. They have an outstanding program where they are uh, basically offering their $200 resume package to all of the America's Voice Now uh, radio and, and uh, uh, listeners and, and our friends, uh, basically for half price. 50% off, so it'll cost you $100 to have your resume either rewritten or rebuilt or started from scratch. They go through a process with you where they talk to you about what your, uh, you know, the, the, what your history has been, and then they find out what successes you've had, and they redevelop your resume so that it is focused on, what, uh, or in, on those areas where it will give you the greatest opportunity to get to the job interview, and that's what resumes are all about. They will then take that $100, and they're going to donate the entire amount to America's Voice Now to keep us on the air. You can also help us independently by going to our website at americasvoicenow.org. There you can utilize PayPal, and you can make a one-time or a monthly uh, commitment and pledge to us. We are desperately in need of it. We always run on the red, folks. And I cover it, so if you can help us out, we'd greatly appreciate it. In addition to that, you can mail us a one-time payment and a check or a money order or something else, and you can do that by uh, sending to America's Voice Now, P.O. Box 1195 in West Plains, Missouri, 65775. That's America's Voice Now, P.O. Box 1195, West Plains, Missouri, 65775. Please make sure that you visit BatteryStation.com. They are an outstanding supporter and a longtime friend of this program. You can find them at 303 Washington Avenue. You can get them on the web at BatteryStation.com, or you can call them at 417-257-7799. If you'd like, you can visit our friends over at Pizza Hut today. Uh, today is a reduced lunch price, and then Thursday's reduced lunch. Tonight, it's family night. Kids under 12 eat free. Make sure that you take the family there. You can get something healthy and tasty all at the same time. Spend some family time together. 
you'll enjoy that. Make sure that you let these folks know when you speak to them that you heard about it here on America's Voice Now. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.